Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Hersey Hoops podcast. My name is Connor Durkin. Joined alongside me is Connor Krebs, and we're with Coach Scott once again to discuss these past couple of games and uh, the ones coming up as well. Coach, yeah, thank you certainly. for coming on. Certainly. You know, I, I know Krebs and I have missed a few consecutive weeks. It's It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been so a minute. glad to be back. Um, you know, again, this is always one of my favorite parts of the week. Uh Chopping it up with you guys, mm-hmm. as they say. Chopping it up is Chopping a new, new term I use. That and shysty. I'm, I'm on to those two. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get right into these questions here. I first wanted to take it back a couple of games ago now. Sure. Um, I think it was probably the hardest part of your schedule when you were playing both of the Glenbrooks, and then yeah. you also played played Meadows. When you're going up against some of those top-tier teams talent-wise, how do you go about that and applying it to your own game? Yeah, you know, I think – the biggest thing we've emphasized in those games this year, whether it be Glenbrook North, Glenbrook South, Barrington, New Trier, um, those teams that we've played that are, you know, Rolling Meadows, obviously, that have been ranked as the top teams in the state, is, like, you got to learn from them what they do a little bit, too. Um, you know, like, Glenbrook South, those guys are, like, robots, man. Like, they're so disciplined. Like, Cooper Nard's a first-team All-Stater. Um and he came into that gym, like I walked past him, and he was like laser focused. Um, and I told the guys about that, and they recognized that, and like how they communicate to each other, like how they give verbals on screen switches and things like that, how they execute, how they screen, like what makes them so hard to guard, other than just being exceptionally skilled. Because um, they are, like learning from Glenbrook North, they had they have a sophomore point guard who's maybe 5'9", who's like an absolute pain in the neck to play against. Um, and that was a great experience for Jared Breton Braden to learn from him and what makes him so hard to go against. And then obviously, you know, Meadows plays so fast and get out in transition so fast. And like all, they're always in their spots. Um, and then, you know, Mark Nikolich Wilson played really well against us being super physical and attacking offensive rebounds. So there's just a lot of things to learn, but in terms of preparing for them, um, you know, my message to the guys always is to, you know, ask yourself after the game, like, did I do my best based on who I was then and what I knew then, you know? Um, and if that answer is yes, you have to live with the results. Um, and, and we have for the most part and competed in those, in those games and, um, just to not give up. And I think in the second half, especially, you know, the Glenbrook South game, you know, I know Jimmy is in absentia today, uh, due to injury, but like, he played his tail off and then was rewarded with, you know, more minutes and I think a starting position in the next game. Like, everything is being evaluated all the time. And I think that that's the message, that it's not like we're not playing the scoreboard, we're playing the possession. And I think that that's the key takeaway for those games. And then last night you guys played our rival's prospect. Unfortunately, that didn't go the way uh, we wanted. But what were some things that stuck to you after last night? Yeah, um <clears throat> And again, a lot of guys played yeah. in last night's game. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think that you know the ball just didn't find the basket very well. You know, we had twelve points in the first half, and I mean, yeah, Cat had like those two rattled out threes. Like mm-hmm. I thought both of those were going, and someone else had another one. I felt like every yeah. shot just did not fall. Right, and I think you know, um, obviously, that's a very emotional game, and you know, I think we came out a little bit flat, but that's that's on me in terms of. You know, preparing them mentally to be ready to go. Um, and, you know, when, when things are a struggle offensively, it can affect other parts of the game. And we just got to stay focused. I know the guys were disappointed, but the Buffalo Grove game coming up on Friday is just as important um, because it's our next game. But, you know, a lot of guys had uh, uh, some opportunities last night too, which was good to see as well. Yeah, and you did mention Jimmy already going down last night. Uh, you know, obviously thoughts got to him since he's missing the pod today. But what's the – timetable on his return is he doing you know it, it, right? I, he sent me a, I made him send me a picture last night um and obviously it happened in warm-ups before the game which is kind of a unique situation um but I don't know you know how fast everybody's bodies differently in the way they heal especially ankles um some swell more than others some are quick healers some are you know can be a long and nagging injury so I'm going to play it you know NHL style a little bit and just say lower leg injury <laughs> um I, I don't know when I don't know when he's going to be back. Um, so we'll see. We'll take it kind of day by day and see how Mr. Bacon evaluates him today. I love how they do that in hockey, though. Like 
upper body injury and he's got like a broken arm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they do. It's yeah, crazy. That's, that's a good point. Even some of the NBA injuries right. are the most random. Like, yeah, like we yeah, can, some teams are very vague on mm-hmm. what's actually going. Like on. Belichick with the Patriots is always purposely vague too, yeah. and mm-hmm. he doesn't release who's active until the, the last, last second. Yeah. You know, which makes fantasy owners like Krebs all stressed out. My fantasy team actually won this year. Nice. Yeah. Um, no, but like you said, on Friday you guys played BG. What are you doing to prepare for them? Um, you know, Buffalo Grove plays really fast and really loose, so transition defense is uh, a priority for us. Um, you know, in, in watching the last game we played, we were able to kind of hold Adidas Davis in check a little bit. Um and I think that's that's part of the key. But they have a lot of shooters. Uh, Aiden Ramonsky can shoot. Um, the sophomore point guard number two, his name escapes me, Connor Wooden. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He can shoot it as well. Um, and they got a lot of guys that play hard. Um, and, you know, they're looking for vengeance from the first game too. And I know that they weren't pleased about that. And that Buffalo Grove Hersey rivalry runs deep. We actually have two um, – Parents uh, on our roster who are, or technically three, Buffalo Grove grads. So Mr. Oh, and Mrs. Rig both went oh, to Buffalo Grove. Really? And then Carson's dad, Kyle Grove, um, played at Buffalo Grove. So Coach Raleigh actually remembered, um, and he like, failed to put together that uh, Carson was Kyle's son. He's like, did your dad play for Buffalo Grove? And Carson's like, yeah. You know how Carson is. Yeah, yeah. One word answers. <laughs> so um, he found that out. He's like, he was he was a good player. He was a really good player. And Carson's like, yeah, whatever. You know. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So there's there's some there's some bison pride uh, on the on the parents side. I too. did not know Mr. and Mrs. Rig went yeah. to PG at all. Yeah, alma mater. So. And then I, I know it's kind of crazy to believe, but it's February now. Um, how are you guys just making sure you're going to finish the season on a high note? Yeah, we're just, you know, I, we talked about this last night in the locker room. we got to renew our focus every day with our emphasis on daily improvement and daily excellence. Like, how are we going to get better today at what we do? Um, for Friday, for Saturday against a really good Lake Forest team. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen or heard about Lake, Lake, Lake Forest is really, really good. Um, Asa Thomas is a stud. You know, like six five guard. Oh, that's fun. Um, that's always the best. So, uh, like, we're gonna have to be really, really good, and just have to um, again focus on daily improvement. Like, how can we get better today, and make sure yesterday's problems aren't tomorrow's problems? And that's uh, you know the challenge for us every single day as we move forward into this. But and good teams and well coached teams are playing their best basketball at the end of the year, and that's my job. For sure. All right. Well, now it is time to. I'm so, oh, <laughs> I'm so nervous. Oh man, so like uh, like Connor talked about uh, at the beginning, um, because of Jimmy's uh, injury yesterday, he was unable to get here today. So I'm walking down here. I'm like, you know, I don't really want to answer these questions. Nobody cares who my celebrity crush is. So I'm gonna flip the script, literally and figuratively. I'm trying to like think on our podcast hosts. Uh. And ask them the question. So I am pumped about this to kind of narrate this pod here. Um, so let's talk about favorite Hersey sports memory. Oh, okay. Um, it could be from your broadcasting career or your athletic career, as both of you guys have participated in varsity athletics. So let's start with Connor Krebs. Connor with me. Does it have to be a varsity sport, or can it be any? It doesn't have to be okay, a varsity cool. sport. Okay, cool. Freshman year basketball with Bruce when we beat uh, Geneva on a buzzer beater that I hit. Wow. That one, for sure. At Geneva. At Geneva. Okay. Nice little step. Nice. Drove to the middle, finished, got the boys going. Good, 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 good. For me, it would probably have to be my sophomore year. We were announcing, I was with Max Hansen. Um, and it was when we beat Meadows. Oh, the Ebo and, game. Yeah, the Ebo game. And I just remember how crazy we went. That was on wild. the mic. That was wild. Won. So that definitely has to be. The, my I, favorite. I remember that clip. Yeah, that clip. You guys, you guys yelling. posted that. Yeah, yeah. that's I'm a great. A, yeah, that, that is, is a awesome. good one. That's it's a great one. call. I mean, I think in terms of, you know, the Mount Rushmore of, you know, calls. You have like the Al Michaels Miracle <laughs> on Ice call in 1980, and then there's Dirk, there's uh, Durkin and Hanson 2020. 
Yeah. I'd um, say my favorite broadcasting one was wheeling. Yeah, that Hop, was fun. Because I called. I was like, "Cat's yeah, gonna like, scream for Hop. Hop's gonna." Yeah. Uh, and it worked. And I was like, "Yep." And then awesome. we were just screaming in the. You no, know, we got to get Hatfield. We got to get Krebs a telestrator. I think like if, if he had a telestrator and he was going Romo on the the sideline, <laughs> just, just start play, drawing on the. He play. could really <laughs> flex his knowledge. <laughs> All right. Um, Next, who is your celebrity crush? Now you can't you, say heinous here. Krebs. You, you you can go first. <laughs> um, I I have to like think. I'm not. You know. Okay. So back in the day, like especially like middle school, it was always Nicki Minaj for me. Oh I wow. I go with okay. Nicki Minaj probably. Wow. So I did random. not. See I was that not that. ready for that at all. <laughs> Back coops up and chuck the juice up. I all right. It. Um. I, I'm like not. I don't. Just don't say Megan Fox. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no Megan no, Fox, no, no, no Rihanna, no repeats. Um, probably Corinna Kampf, because she's like the only like I don't know who that is yeah, that TikTok is that? star. She's like yeah, basically yeah. The TikTok, you're, you're yeah. a sucker for the TikTok dance. Not even I, I don't even I think it. she posts TikToks, but like actually no, she definitely does. I think she's she's just like YouTube. I think okay, yeah, all yeah. right, she's okay. Though. All right, Emil, you guys can prepare on your own. Let's start with Dirk in here. Uh, I'm trying to think of something. Honestly, I did. I made like a really amazing burger one time. I know that's not much, but I cannot grill at all. Really? So my dad, my not my dad, my mom walked me through it a little bit, but a burger, I would say. Okay. I'm, I'm not that big I, of a <laughs> of a cook. I can't yeah, I'm like trying to even think. Um, I mean, anything that like has directions on it, I can oh I can gosh. whip off like, like that out of the box. I mean, no, like, like if I you're could making eat, like the I crabs, could... if you're making the crabs original okay. cookbook, what is page one? Okay, see, the thing is, like, my mom makes gas food. Like, yeah. you have to get that on Christy Krebs. Shout out my mother makes really really good food. Like, that's just so. Like, I only eat good food. So, like, when I cook, it's just like. Yeah, you're, you're, I, I just like don't even enjoy it. I'm just like this isn't even your standard has been elevated. Yeah, no, literally, and I've found that throughout my entire life. And you it's, gotta unlock me here. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I like your background. Yeah, what hole is that? Hold on, I don't even remember. Speaking of this. speaking <laughs> of golf, I have I have seen Krebs golf. You have seen yes. Krebs golf. So I, w- I was with. Uh, we have to have a podcast outing because Krebs is Krebs is enjoyable to watch golf. A <laughs> lot of movement, a lot of limbs flying, like body weight shifting everywhere. It's an enjoyable sight. And then you know the one drive I saw, I think. Who was I with? I think uh, I m- I shanked it. It was like you, Stearns, it. Namo. I, no one hit a good Armstrong. Shot. No, and okay. I think three houses got hit. No, this is this is the thing. Jack is arguably the worst out of all four, or probably the worst, or Ryan. All me, Ryan, me and Evan are definitely I Ryan the best. Is decent, no? Ryan's all right, yeah. Me and Evan are probably the better two out of the, those four, and we both shank it. And of course, Jack hits his best shot all yeah. day. It in was front like of, pure. It was pure, and he was all the rest of the day. He would not stop yeah. about and you it. You know Armstrong too, like when he, he yeah. does so well, he's so confident about oh, it. He just like he kind of like held his yeah. body through, like watched it like slice the fairway in half. I'm like, nice shot, Jack. He's like. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was all right. It's it was so annoying. You have no idea just because Jack Armstrong is like that. Like, I think he, it was old old like hole twelve. Really? Like yeah, the one that's like a dog leg, soft yes. dog leg yeah, left no. at the end. Were you playing with them? Or? No, I was teeing off on nine. Oh, and you just and you just I saw saw them going on twelve, yeah. so I like made sure I watched yeah. them so they could get all rattled. <laughs> we were rattled to say the least. All right, um, favorite pregame song okay. or favorite? I, here's my question that I asked. Um, my freshman class recently favorite non hip hop track. Okay, you know, like what's a what's a banger on your shuffle right now? So I actually have a place that doesn't have any rap or hip hop on it. So you're so such a cultured guy. I am. Um, oh, but picking a favorite is not easy. Uh, can I pull out the pay- playlist? Is pull, that pull a little out? All right, cool. Pull I, it out. I, I'm not good <clears> off the top of my head. So let's. In let's the meantime, see. Durkin, you got any? I, I'm thinking. So I don't really listen to much like current pop but I'll every once in a while listen to what my dad would listen to so I'd probably have to go with something other than hip hop I don't have a specific hmm. song but something like Bruce Springsteen maybe. oh your dad's a Springsteen Bruce guy Springsteen guy yeah love it okay um, like Thunder Road Jungle Land yeah. My City of Ruins is excellent um good stuff man uh, that probably counts as um okay so I'm probably gonna say 
rather be by clean bandit that's a brand i don't know if you know that one rather i also be? like tongue tied like that tongue tied uh group love yeah that's a I really love, good song. love you some that's group a good love song. that's a really good song. Like, i actually have just like a lot of, of happiness count as rap that's kid that's, that's kid Cuddy's, Cuddy's, okay i've oh, actually Cuddy's actor slash rapper oh other than if it is rap yeah, yeah i mean go yeah Cuddy's yeah okay sure, it, that one's like right up there too because yeah. that song is just like so good i don't even like consider it a genre really i feel like yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Cuddy's good though. He's also a good actor. Like he, he was oh, in. Uh, what, what was he in? Um, did you see the um, the movie on Netflix? The one about like the asteroid hitting the Earth. Yeah. Yes. Don't look, don't, look, don't, don't look up. Don't look. Don't look up. Don't look up. Don't look up. That, that did you enjoy it? I I liked it. My mom hated it. Really? I thought it was good just because I Jonah or what, what's his name? Uh, Jonah or Jonah Hill's in Jonah it. Hill, right? Yeah, That's yeah. Jonah Hill. Yeah, I, yeah. He, I think he's so funny. He's yeah, just like he he's just he's just really really funny. And then Leo is like unreal at acting. Yeah, the, so. the movie it was a little. They laid the slow. They laid the satire on a little thick yeah. for me. Um, you know, but it, it is what it is. I thought it was good. I thought it was well done. Um, you know, obviously they're trying to show that parallel between. Mm-hmm. That and COVID a little bit. And again, like at, at times I was like, okay, we get it. Yeah. Like, this is a little much. Um, but nonetheless, entertaining. Like, at, at times I was like, okay, we're moving slow here. Yeah, like, it's, it's a pretty long movie. It's, it's yeah, a it long, is long movie. Yeah. All these movies that are like two hours and 20 minutes, like it impacts me like pressing play <laughs> at the beginning. Like, two hours, like this could easily be an hour and 45 yeah. minutes. You know, like I think, I think Leo's movies are always that long. Yeah. Like just like all the good ones are always so long. All right, next question. What is your favorite pet peeve? Or what is your pet peeve? I I have one right off the bat. Let's hear it. So this is going to be a little weird, but when people don't, like, tie their shoes, like, even in basketball, age where I babe, someone doesn't have their shoes tied, (laughs) that just bugs me. I don't know what it is, but Um, that's always bugged me. Biggest pet peeve. I think I have, like, a lot of small ones, probably. Um... Probably okay. This one's like kind of weird, but when people talk about something, they literally have no idea and oh like pretend gosh. to know about it. I'm not a fan of that. That just makes me angry. I don't. Yeah. Not a fan. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a fan. All right, I like those. Those are both good. Um, favorite vacation spot. Got it. Let me um, go. Yeah, you go. I gotta think. This is gonna be exotic, folks. Oh, um, is going straight <laughs> exotic. Like Bermuda I have two. Triangle. I have two. I have two. Like I can't pick one of that. Um. The first one's Aruba. Ooh. Great place. Going back soon, hopefully. Shout out Beach Boys. And Aruba, then um, Italy, for sure. I Italy. think have I you think, been? Yes, I have been. Oh, man. I, I've been, great. I've been to uh, Italy, France, oh, Spain. Wow. It was all in one trip. See, uh, it yeah. was all I, in I one trip. I knew Krebs wasn't going to go so, like Florida <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, he's, going, he's going on it, like eight-hour flights, wherever I th- he's going. I think Italy's the coolest place in the world, for sure. Like, but like Aruba's just like a whole other level of crazy yeah. beautiful. Yeah. True. Yeah, for me, definitely. I haven't been out of the country yet, so my dream vacation spot would be somewhere in Europe. But my favorite would either have to be when we went to Hawaii. Uh, back I've when never I was been a, to Hawaii. It's I've awesome. never been either. when I was a freshman. That was so fun. And then this recent year, since we couldn't really fly because of the code and everything, we went up to Mackinac Island in Michigan, and that place was was pretty cool. Too. Okay, yeah, because it's like disconnected from yeah, the actual. Oh, 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 there. oh, no okay. cars, no cars. That's crazy. It's like yeah. old fashioned. So. Yeah, it's kind of like Door County. Okay, door yeah, yeah, yeah. That, cool. That's cool, actually. Okay. Um, now, like, I'm gonna go off script here. You guys have answered these. Let's talk AHYBA a little bit. Oh um, yes, thank okay. you. Yeah. So, every, I mean, you know, everybody knows I, I have endorsed the Spurs, and the reason why people ask me why you endorse the Spurs. First of all, I've made it clear on this podcast, Alex Jalaka is my guy. <laughs> He's always going to be my guy. Also, you know, I know the P Rocks is coaching him now, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I trust P Rocks' intellect. Uh, the general manager brass of uh, Wackel and Conroy. I just think their ownership is is really well done. You know, it's like uh, you know you got Jerry Jones and, and Rob Kraft in the same owners box with those two guys, and then you know you got your Brad Stevens rocks, and then you know your your iconic HYBA legends in Jalaka, Nudo, and Stoga. So you know I, I know they've had their struggles. I know they lost. Um, you know, Mario's team gave him a hard time, I guess. But we're scheming. We're scheming. We're putting our heads together and getting it getting it back. My, I know the Clippers are competitive. My, my team almost got in multiple fights with the Hawks. There really? was, it was The Hawks are hot. like the bad boy Pistons of the early 90s. It was... It was bad. It was there's some there's a lot of things happening. So what's one. the what's the update on the Pacers? We're good. 
we we're versatile. Like when we get to play, when we have everyone there, and we have like all six of the kids who like are like act, mm-hmm. have played a basketball game before, we're pretty solid. Like we beat his team. Yeah. We beat, By, we like beat that. It was close. At it, least. It, we yeah, we were we were seconds, we were but. smacking them, and they came back hard on us. But uh, fifth quarter, we are a fifth quarter team. Five that, quarters. Yeah, because yeah, like you, you, it's one. even yeah. playing for like first through fourth. Fifth quarter, you can play whoever. It's like fifth quarter, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. It's just like kids just going at it and for high school. Like it's the a good rule time. Doesn't matter as much. Yeah, but, like when like. For the younger kids, they want equal playing time. So gotcha. they mm-hmm. split it for like the four quarters. And I, I had whatever. to play all five quarters uh, Sunday against one of the best teams in the league. I was dead. I was just exhausted. Man. Five quarters. And then what five. team are you on? I'm on the Mavs. So okay. I'm with Cam Sullivan, who's one of the broadcasters yeah. for a Prospect. His dad and my dad have been coaching together for like six, seven years. So we've had the same team pretty much gotcha. for a very long time. So we got that chemistry. Yeah, so when they do. When do the playoffs start? It's like February 26th. Yeah, mid, late February. Yeah, something like that. I okay. think that's like the first day. I'm ex- I, I'm, I think my Spurs game is coming up. I yeah. think. It's like next weekend. Okay. I play Nam on Sunday. Clippers, Clippers, Clippers versus Pacers. The Clippers have talent, man. No, they don't. Nam, you got Otter. Like, how, okay, how Ot's a bucket. Let Ot's me, let me ask you this. So Nam, like, but. strategically and schematically, like, how do you defend Ot? Because so, I, I know he can stretch the floor, and he's a lot to handle in the post, too. Like, that's a tough AHYBA we, matchup. We have the prospect version of Ot on my team. Okay. I promise you. Like, you know, you remember J.J.? Yeah, yeah, no, oh, literally, like, literally. Just, they don't call fouls. Yeah, you, it's, you're straight it's up the call when him and Ot go. I think, he'll, I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be hilarious. Actually, it's, it's gonna be a, throws, it's gonna be a battle. Be. Those two are some big, big offensive linemen yeah. boys. Yeah. And Ot's got, Ot's got good feet and good hands too. I think, you know, if the Pacers and just looking at this, I'm you know, kind of putting my Jay Billis lens on without ever seeing any <laughs> game here. Um, I think if you can stretch Ot and get him to defend some ball screens, make him recover. You know things like that, like get out moving around, like well, one in the thing fifth quarter. Yeah, um, you can kind of limit his offensive production by way of making him work on defense too. Uh, but that's a that's a lot to handle. He's a tough yeah. player. Yeah, Andy, his footwork's crazy. But my the one thing I hate about AHYB is all of these kids want to play a two three zone. Mario's team plays a three two zone. Well, and get the, tra- ball in the middle. No, I know it's like fine. Like we figured it out now. But like at the beginning, I was like, "This is really like what?" The, like you know, no, everyone I was, does. I I didn't conference. know that. I was expecting everyone to be like full court, like pressing man, and it is not. It's yeah. a lot more relaxed than that. But we try. is is does Stearns play? Because I feel like he could he could disrupt. So the teams. next year, you're gonna see a a powerhouse come through. Oh, there's there's man. it's already in the making. Super team. There's a super team coming. Super team. So I think full court. You're, you're gonna have a full lot. Full court. Of he could cause some problems on some guys. You're, you're you're gonna have a former team of about like six former Hersey guys. Wow. And it's it's gonna be trouble yeah. for the rest of the league. Let me tell you. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. Yep. The, maybe the maybe the commissioner might veto this super team, but you never know what's good for the health of the league. <laughs> um, all right. Shout outs before we kind of close up today. Does this, do we get you shout outs? Okay. Yeah. Um shout out Christy Krebs and her cooking. Absolutely. Yeah. And and uh yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, I probably have to shout out the family. Uh usually the first ones to view this podcast most weeks, so thank you, uh mom and dad for always watching. Absolutely. Did you guys shovel this morning? No. no. I could see you so you're a snowblower guy. You <laughs> oh yeah, we do snowblower, yeah. yeah. So I got up and shoveled and then um like, you know, I went back inside and showered and stuff, and then there was more. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. like, that's so frustrating. It's so annoying. So I'll have to snowblow when I get home. But shout out Mr. Polis for hooking me up with my first snowblower. I've never had one before, so that's pretty sweet. Also, um, shout out he- uh, Meg Merwicky. Um We haven't really had a podcast since she got uh, injured. Obviously, we're all pulling for Meg. Um, I have Meg in class. Awesome kid. Awesome student. Always smile on her face. Always filling up my water bottle for me, like just willing to do anything. And like as successful as she's been in sports, she's as humble as they come. You know, like Meg's the best. You'd have no idea she's going no to idea. Notre Dame for no soccer. Idea. You'd have no and like idea. never wants to talk about herself. Mm-mm. Always wants to talk about other people. And obviously that's, you know, a tough loss for the girls team uh, to lose her skills. But I think also like her leadership is still going to be there and mm. down the stretch. So shout out Meg. All right. My homie, Meg. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Hersey Hoops. Thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you in the next one. Appreciate it.